I already pressed it now. Recording started. We're not doing anything. But we're not doing anything. Don't press yet. It's okay. I can pause. Hello. Unmute then. No, Kilen. Okay, I, th I think we can start. Dato' Tahir. Dato' Eh, boleh? Dato' Tahir. Dato' Tahir. Okay. Masuk lagi lah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, we begin our session with uh, Al-Fatihah. Bismillah. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for coming for uh, today's talk on ethics and integrity. Uh, this is part of our webinar series under the Department of Business Administ Administration. Uh, we are pleased to have with us our adjunct professor Dr. Amiruddin uh, Sata, who will be talking about ethics and integrity. Um, we thank that we thank you Dato eh, for making the time from your busy schedule to be with us today. Okay. Um, we also uh, thank all those who are here today, the, 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 the staff and the students who are joining the session uh, via Zoom. Uh, and also, uh, we also thank Dr. Tahir, Dr. Fuad, Dr. Tahir, Dr. Husna, our technical team here, and Sister Aiza for setting this uh, session, uh, making it easy. <laughs> For people like this, okay. So, uh, be begin before we begin. Eh, let me just introduce that to Amiruddin. Yeah, I just write out. I, I will just read out his uh, CV. Yeah, which is uh, very very illustrious. Uh, that Amiruddin has over thirty years of experience in finance and management. He began his career in 1989 as an accountant uh, executive with uh, UMW Toyota Berhad. He then joined uh, Bostik Holdings eh, as an accountant. And then he went on to join INC Senderan Berhad, which is a subsidiary of Lembaga Tabung Haji as finance manager. In uh, From then on, uh, Dato Amaruddin went, went to join uh, KPJ Healthcare Berhad. Yeah? where he has been there for quite some time, uh, first as a finance manager in 1996, and then as deputy general manager, and then as group general manager, and then as chief operating officer. Okay, And then uh, finally as president and managing director of KPJ uh, until uh, uh, a post he's, he held for seven years. Eh? Seven years. He was 27. 27. Uh, 27 years at KPJ, yeah? but seven years as President and Managing Director of KPJ. Uh, Dr. Amiruddin is currently the Director General of the Federal Land Development Authority, PELDA, uh, which he just joined yeah, in, in, uh, in October 2020. He's also the Independent Non-Executive Director in Ipmoda Berhad. Uh, and he, he he also currently sits uh, on the Malaysia Advisory Committee of ACCA since 2018. Dr. Amaruddin holds a Master in Business Administration from the Henley Business School, uh, University of Reading. He is also a member of the Association, Association yeah, of Chartered Certified Accountant, ACCA United Kingdom. Yeah, please uh, let us welcome Dr. Amaruddin. Uh, please, Dr. Amaruddin. Yeah. Uh, we listen to your lecture. Thank you. Rahim. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Dr. Hazila, for very uh, nice long introduction. Uh, thank you, uh, University Islam Antarabangsa Malaysia, for inviting me to this session, uh, webinar session with topic on ethics and integrity above all else. Um, I will approach the subject from a corporate organization perspective. If you're gonna cover this topic on ethics and integrity at individual level, it'll be very straightforward. Simply put, ethics and integrity, if we talk about 
uh, individual or as a person, uh, just those having good traits, having good behavior can qualify to, to, to have good ethics and integrity. But from a corporate angle, we it's a little more complex because we're talking about uh, influencing and uh, setting goals for employees or individual working in an organization to have good ethics and integrity. So that's why my, my slide will start with uh, the topic of corporate governance. Um, any good organization must have good corporate governance to instill and make sure that all the members uh, apply good traits or good attributes of having good ethics and integrity. So corporate governance, if I can define corporate governance, basically talking about structure, rules, practices, and processes within the organization, that manage the company. So we know the word governance is managing uh, organization or company. So with, corporate gov with good corporate governance, uh, the board and the management will, will establish or set the philosophy and foundation of the organization. This is very important. Uh, we're talking about uh, promoting good practice within organization. So you need, you need a good top bottom approach uh, to, to, to make sure that you, the company have a good culture and a good moral compass for all their members to follow. So this is very important. Uh, setting high standard and high integrity uh, with good ethical values to all members of the organization. We all know when we talk about organization, especially companies who are doing business, almost all companies will have objective to maximize profit. But nowadays, I think that is not sufficient. That is not enough to determine whether the, the, the organization or the company is successful. All organizations need to define higher meaning of their business beyond making profit. So here, I think now people, everybody talking about UN SDG. United Nations has already set the standard in their sustainable development goals, which cover many aspects of, uh, uh, that touch on all aspects of human being and uh, good governance in all countries. If, if I can sum up, any good company must have in the objective to look after the community, to look after the environment, and at the same time, uh, have an excellent business practices within the organization. So if these three main objectives are met, I would argue that uh, the company is, uh, is, is excellent company. It's an excellent company. So in short, if you can see uh, sustainable development goal developed by UN, uh, there are 17 goals that have been identified. Uh, you can Google, you can do any, you, you can search on the internet. I mean, there, there are many discussion on this UN SDG. Some companies choose all 17 goals as part of their objectives. Uh, but, but there are many companies that choose partial, only partial of the goal, partial of the goals uh, as their immediate objective. And, and this is important in setting the direction of the company because nowadays investors are not looking at just organization giving good return on their investment. It is very important that organization also uh, look after the interests of the community, look after the interests of the environment. Uh, they are companies that only invested, they are uh, investors that only invested in companies that, that set their goals along the line of UNSDG. They will last 
the company, what are they going to do with their workforce, workforces? Uh, what are their uh, uh, activities or program that look after the environment, look after the, the, the forest, the, the river, the, 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 the environment around us? So it is important nowadays that all organization set their goals that, that include all or part of the UN SDA. If I, if I want to approach the subject of corporate governance, ethics, and integrity, mm -hmm. you cannot separate these three uh, topics uh, from one another. I would argue that uh, corporate governance if you look at from the company's perspective, organization perspective, will be the basis uh, for ethics and integrity to be developed within organization. I would say that ethics is a subset of corporate governance and integrity will be the subset of ethics. So coming back to corporate governance. I line up here some of the points uh, and uh, topics to guide organizations to develop their own corporate governance. When we talk about corporate governance, the board and the management must first uh, establish a robust policies and regulations. Uh, the do's and don'ts for all their employees to conduct themselves while working within the organization. Uh, thereafter, our organization must establish the structures that look at that that have in place uh, the audit team, the integrity unit, uh, and and reporting line among all the members within the organization to make sure that. Uh, bad practice or misconduct are reported. Everybody need to have sound system and processes that govern the way the employees work and behave within the organization. Uh, risk management is also another important factor that organization must uh, establish to, to guide their investment policies, to guide their procurement policies, to make sure that uh, the process uh, uh, take into consideration uh, high ethics and integrity. Uh, a working whistleblowing mechanism must be established to make sure that any wrongdoing will be reported and will be, uh, will be dealt with and uh, those found responsible or found uh, to, to, to do uh, any wrongdoing will be punished by the, by, by the company. So in the end, as a whole, good corporate governance must promote integrity, transparency, and consistency. We seldom talk about consistency, uh, but I believe this is an important factor for any individual, any organization to, to really uh, demonstrate that they have good corporate governance. We're talking about consistencies of uh, practices, consistencies of policy. We don't want to be changing our policy or rule every day or every month. That we, that we create doubt or suspicion uh, among those dealing with the organization. I mean, if you come today, you have to wait for 10 minutes and the, the next day you come to get your service, you have to wait for 20 minutes. That's already cause chaos in the system or in the operation. So what more of talking about uh, payment policies, inventory policies, uh, procurement policies uh, that, that, that create confusion among those dealing with the, the company. If you don't have consistency, consistent uh, SOPs or procedures, uh, when they deal with the organization. A bit about high corporate integrity. 
if you have to talk about individual integrity, that will be very, very easy. Uh, when we, so integrity means uh, trustworthy, sincere, uh, um, frank, uh, reliable person. But we, when we talk about high corporate integrity, it, it has to uh, include integrity in processes, integrity in system, and hopefully uh, when, when we have good individual, good processes that manage our operation, good system, the brand will also be recognized as high integrity brand. So all organization, be it university, be it uh, uh, societies, should strive to achieve the highest level of integrity, which is brand integrity. How do we develop a successful corporate governance? I touched a bit just now on, on, on having good structure, good policies, but in the end, it goes beyond just setting the rules. Of course, when we have the policies and rules that, that govern our organization, it must be made, it, it must be made uh, available to all the members. Everybody must be aware of how they should conduct themselves within the organization. Uh, they, they, the, the, the organization or the board must have, must have serious, must put serious effort to promote the policies and rules within organization so that nobody can give, give an excuse that they are not aware or they don't uh, uh, agree with some of the policies set by, by the company. Having the rules is not enough if we allow all members to simply go about their own way in, 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 in running the operation. So compliance to the rule, compliance to the policies is very important. Uh, there must be enforcement uh, within the organization to make sure that everybody toe the line. Everybody uh, follow uh, the rules and policies of the organization. There must be enforcement, there must be monitoring processes. These are normally done by the internal audit or integrity unit. And uh, those found guilty must be taken action mm -hmm. against. So punitive actions for, for the fault or misconduct uh, done by any of the employees should be, uh, should be uh, implemented in the organization. Over and above having the rules and having co good compliance among the members, I think company with good corporate governance should communicate to the public. I think this is another level of good corporate governance. We're not talking about just having one organization with good practice. So apart from building trust within the community, uh, a, a good company, a good organization should share their ideas, should share with the public on what they are doing uh, to the community, to the environment. So with the hope that other organization follow suit, other organ organization compete with your, your organization uh, to do better in, in, in looking after the environment and community. Another level of, of good corporate or uh, good organization will be those that champion certain costs. We, we have seen over the years, uh, many successful organization champion uh, certain program or initiative that support the protection of our environment, the protection of community, the, 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 and promote good practice uh, uh, within, the, within the community uh, that, that bring bigger value to the community. Uh, we're talking about, uh, um, uh, for example, some company may choose a uh, certain program that reduce use of single plus single use plastic or those that protect the, 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 the forest by planting trees. So there, there, there are many examples, there are many ways that co good corporate organization uh, can, can 
can uh, adopt some program for the good of the community. So this is another way, another diagram to look at how we can build the trust. So at the end of the day, we, we, why we want to have good ethics, why we, have, we want to have a high integrity among our people is to gain more trust. If you're doing business, we want people to trust our product. If you're doing business, we want people to trust our operation, trust those working within the organization. And uh, ultimately, if we have good trusted brand, um, we, will, we, will, we will be more successful in our business. Um, some companies strive to, to have good product and services. Some company focus on operation. Some company uh, inculcate good value among their people where their, their workers are trusted, their service providers are trusted. But those that can get the highest level of trust, which is brand, uh, brand trust, I think will be the most successful in their, in, in their business. Moving down to ethics, I think simply put, I would argue that high ethic is equivalent to good person. Um, these are attributes or traits of how we define a good person. You must have good value system, good moral, uh, good demeanor, behavior, and I'm sure uh, good sound mind uh, and conduct. These are basically how people look at other people and make judgment on, on other people. Uh, everybody is influenced by their own religion, influenced by their culture, by their upbringing. And uh, this involves the whole education system and uh, family foundation that nurture all individual, especially our youngsters and what make them and when they grow older. So a good person is a good ethical individual. But when we, when we talk about uh, in working environment, this is just a basic trait or attributes that we want indiv all individuals to have. Everybody is trained in their profession. So everybody needs to demonstrate that they are professional when they deal with others in, in business uh, transaction. And most professionals are shaped by their own training and upbringing. Almost all professionals, almost all professions have their own code of ethics. So this is what people impression on uh, this list of professionals that I, I have here on the slide. When we talk about accountants and lawyers, people always regard them as trustworthy. So, so all accountants and lawyers must, must demonstrate that they can be trusted, that they, above uh, being a good person, they are the one uh, dealing with uh, accounts and personal matters of their clients uh, that, that have put their trust uh, to, to serve uh, their needs. Engineers always associated with precision. Uh, IT professional, they are, they are, especially now with all the application and programming that they introduce, need to be innovative in their in their in their field. Architect, creative, doctors always uh, 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 label as being reliable and caring. So professionalism uh, among the workers is important. Uh, because they need to follow their own ethics in dealing with their clients or in dealing with their uh, work in, in their working environment. So this is over and above uh, 
a good respectable person that are required uh, to have uh, it, it where, where people are required to have eye ethics in their work next coming back to trade of a good person you know in, in, in delivering service you can be well mannered uh, courteous respectable of other people honorable but if you're not knowledgeable in your own work you may not be seen as also ethical because if you claim yourself to be a doctor you must be at least knowledgeable in the medical field if you claim to be an accountant you must be knowledgeable in the accounting or finance subject so over and above having good demeanor uh, they need to be knowledgeable punctuality is important you can be very good doctors very good uh, lecturers but if you're not punctual i think this also uh, uh, opposite uh, this is this is opposite traits of having, of being a good person where ethics uh, uh, which, which is part of good ethics respect others honors competent this again uh, important you can be knowledgeable but you must also be competent in serving uh, your client must be competent in, in working for your organization good attitude uh, uh, is also important and helpful i think in the end of, at the end of the day if everybody have a mindset that you want to help others this will be a minimum trait uh, you 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 can learn you can do whatever you can have all the resources uh, necessary to do your work but the mindset the good mindset or appropriate mindset must be those who want to help others and at the end of the day uh, a good person will always want to do the right things another point i would like to highlight here we we have covered in 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 uh, what, half an hour on corporate governance integrity and ethical but mind you that not not all ethical subjects or not all unethical behavior are illegal i would argue here that uh, illegal uh, legal legal is a subset of ethics there are many areas that legal may not have uh, the legal of a uh, legal system in any country will not cover but ethics as i said earlier is influenced by our own culture influenced by our own community influenced by our own religion so this is a higher give higher meaning and and cover broader, broader scopes than what the legal system will cover so um we cannot we cannot argue that as long as i i do i do legal things therefore i'm i'm having high ethical value because legal only cover part of the behavior part of the actions of people in the world so illegal and 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 unethical unethical is not similar so in short what we need to put in our mind is that as long i do not steal as long i as i do not cheat i do not lie and i do no harm to others i can say i'm ethical i have integrity so this is this is a very simple concept of how we should look at ethics and integrity this is just my words I mean, that's why there's no um it's not a quote from any anybody I just I just put the word together basically good governance integrity and ethics will promote good business practices so in the end of the day we have we want to have good business practices and that can help organization to build public trust on our brand and image 
So if we are to link good governance, integrity, and ethics, at the end of the day, we want our business to be successful. And how a business can be successful, how an organization can be successful is those that have the trust of the public. So these are some of the opposite traits, opposite, con opposite uh, behavior that we don't want to have uh, if, I, I would argue this is opposite, opposite uh, behavior that will lead to these practices, conflict of interest, corrupt practices, uh, embezzlement, fraud, uh, misconduct, bribery, harassment. These are negative practices that organization will have if we don't have good corporate governance. If, it, if, if organization do not have people or employees with high ethical values and high integrity level, this is what gonna happen. We have seen examples of how this misconduct, I will show later some of major examples of organization that fail because of uh, misconduct among their uh, workforce. Organization that fail to instill good ethical value and high integrity among their people will, will in the end, face this, uh, we'll have this fate waiting for them. Uh, from the organization, we, we have seen many, many organizations went bankrupt because of uh, embezzlement or misconduct of their people. At least they will suffer financial losses. Or worse, the reputation of the organization, uh, they may not suffer losses, they may not suffer bankruptcy, but they will be labeled as a corrupt company, corrupt organization. So in return, uh, the company will have damaged reputation. If they are still selling services or product with corrupt practices among their members, their, pro their operation may be inefficient. So instead of uh, having 20, 30% 30, 30 margin on their sales, they may only see a margin or profit of 10%. So inefficiency in, this, in the operation will creep in if we have uh, low ethics value or low integrity among the workers. Or consumer will buy or consume inferior products and services because this is a, the failure of operation to, to produce good products and services. If you're talking about projects, there are many projects uh, either in the government sector or private sector that fail because of corrupt practice. It may fail altogether or it may incur higher costs than what is budgeted or it may be completed but with, with uh, inferior quality. Or for country perspective, at country level, we're talking about economic failure. If you have politicians or, or senior government officers that, are, that involve themselves in corrupt practices. So ultimately, a country or state will have economic failure if allow uh, people with low integrity or, or zero ethics value to serve the country. This is an example of what a failure of corporate governance will do to organization. I have a list of classic cases that the world has seen over the years. These are real case, real example of companies that went down, that went under because of uh, corrupt practices, because of poor corporate governance. And I'm sure they have among their workers and employees that have low ethics value, that have low integrity level. 
waste management scandal in 1998. I, I, don't, I, I don't plan to go one by one, but these are uh, uh, the earlier example of what a big comp what a giant comp that a giant company can also fall if we allow corrupt practices within the organization. So they reported a loss. Sorry. They, the, they, they, they reported a fake earning of 1.7 billion in 1998. Enron scandal. I think this is a um, well documented, much reported uh, case study uh, that has happened in two, year 2001. This basically affect a big audit firm, Arthur Anderson, which, is, which no longer exists now. Arthur Anderson has uh, been shut down and most of their partner, partners and employees, I think now they merge with uh, EY, Ernst and Young. So Enron scandal uh, has big implication on accounting practices. I think what we are seeing now, fair value system and some of the balance, treatment in the balance sheet are the result of Enron scandal in year 2001. Worldcom scandal 2002, Tyco scandal 2002, uh, Health uh, South scandal in 2003. Next, uh, Freddie Mac, AIG Group. These are big insurance companies. Uh, they have a massive accounting fraud to the tune of 3.9 billion. Lemon Brothers. I think this is uh, the uh, subprime issues in 2008 that caused world recession, especially in US in 2008. So this is how big uh, uh, a scandal in one financial company can affect the economy of the world. So we cannot take lightly the importance of good corporate governance because the implication on the economy, the implication on the industry is very, very serious. So here we're talking about they hit over 50 billion US dollar. Um, uh, what was that? What's your, uh, in loan, these guys have sales. So this is related to subprime uh, scandal in 2008. Bernie Madoff. Uh, in Malaysia, we can equate this as Park Mantelo scheme. Lah. So I'm, sh I'm sure uh, this MLM scheme or scheme Cepat Kaya still exists in this world, even in Malaysia, under different names, under different guys. Uh, but in the US, Bernie Meadow scandal, I think, is huge. That affect many people who have been duped. Uh, to invest a lot of money. So this is another Ponzi scheme, one of the biggest in the history of the world. Closer to Malaysia, Satyam scandal, this is India. Uh, again, another accounting uh, fraud. They falsely inflate their revenue by 1.5 billion US dollar. So poor corporate governance, poor integrity can lead to big scandal that can affect the industry and even economy of a country. And in the, in, in the case of Lemon Brothers, it affects the economy of the world. Uh, I hope I have impressed to all of you the importance of having good corporate governance and ethics and integrity in all organization. Uh, I think the topic today uh, is really appropriate considering uh, uh, after what happened in Malaysia uh, with the scandal in 1MDB and many other organizations, FELDA included, that has brought down the government. So ethics and integrity are above everything. We can set good strategy, we can have good uh, plan for, for the organization or for the company, but with poor ethics and integrity, uh, the company is uh, is doomed to fail, and uh, and it will drag down uh, many people, many many uh, um, 
uh, organization if that is not um, uh, addressed well. So the Tazila, I rest my case. So maybe we can proceed now with a Q and A. Okay, Hamdulillah. Thank you very much, Dato, for your uh, insightful talk eh? uh, covering uh, corporate governance. Eh? Basically, co covering co corporate governance eh? in in companies. Yeah. I change a bit the title. Eh? Yeah. No, I still fo I still uh, follow the the theme for today's discussion: ethics and integrity. But I thought corporate governance from organization perspective, corporate governance will 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 address these two issues uh, yes. company-wide. Yes, 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 uh, definitely. Um, and, and also yeah, uh, corporate governance and then um, also uh, ethics at, and uh, at, at the personal level, eh, being a good person, that was covered that also. Uh, so, and what happens yeah, when, when ethics and integrity is comprom compromised in companies, yeah, the the um, the outcome the unfavorable outcome not only to, to the company but it may also uh, affect the uh, country's uh, economy or even the world economy as you rightly mentioned about the Lehman brothers yeah so before um, I, I I continue talking do we have any questions let, let us just look at the chat for yeah? uh, what's the chat here let's look money the chat Let's look at the chat here. Oops. Are there any questions? The chat will be here, is it? Where will we? The chat is here on the lower bottom of the screen. Oh, but there is no question actually. Ah, okay. Oh, all right, all right. There, are, there is a question. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit slow with all this technology. Uh, uh, from the other side, me, yes, uh, to everyone. If to focus on ethics and governance compliance, would there, would there lead to a rigidity, mechanistic, and not agile organizations, uh, and then uh, and become less uh, competitive? Yeah. So, that would you like to address that first? Uh, when we talk about organization uh, from from corporate perspective, you need to have gatekeepers and check and balance. Uh, initially, maybe it will hinder or slow down the decision making process. But after a while, when everybody know the do's and don'ts, uh, the decision can be um, can be done uh, in uh, I think in in in, in, in in reasonable time. But I think what's more important is that it's okay to sometimes have slow decision-making process, but you make the right decision. So ethics and integrity, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is just a good trait in person. So when we talk from corporate perspective, we are talking about how to translate that good individual traits and behavior into organization behavior. So once everybody adopt a good behavior and, and everybody agree with the value system that they want to have for the organization, uh, I think the, the company can be nimble enough. The company can be agile enough to, 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 to process all proposal to process uh, their operation as as efficient as possible. Um, I, I, I don't quite agree that integrity, corporate governance, and ethics will come in a way uh, that will affect efficiency and profit margin of the organization. In fact, I have argued just now, a strong organization with strong corporate governance, we will have bigger trust by the public, will have bigger trust by their own consumer that they will enjoy bigger sales and hopefully bigger margin. Uh, so uh, we, we have discussed just now that ethics and integrity are above everything. Come to even to the point that you may not want to have 
profit. If you have you if you're supposed or if you have to compromise your ethics and integrity. So we're talking about making re, uh, reasonable profit with high ethics and integrity values. Some company don't mind not having profit or don't mind not having project. If they sense, if they can see that the partner or the process that they need to be involved in involve corrupt practices. So that's how, how high people nowadays put uh, ethics and integrity above everything else, including profit. Right, right. thank you, Dato. Uh, okay. Do we have any questions? Um, 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 Rafiki, Rafiki, how can we do this? Oh, okay, okay. That's, that's one from uh, Rafiki Akmal. Uh, how can leaders perform their role to be the catalyst to build an organizational culture with high ethics and integrity? How can leaders talk about the leadership? Uh, number one, of course, they have to walk the talk. That's where I think consistency uh, also help. What I mean by consistency is consistency in uh, applying the policies and rule of the organization. As I said earlier, we don't want to keep changing the, the policy. And policy, uh, consistency in communication also important. Uh, you don't want to be talking one, uh, talking, talking one uh, 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 direction or one directive to one person and giving another directive to another person. That shows um, weakness in the, in, the, in, the, in the leadership and also weakness in the policies and rules of the organization. So, Consistency in, in, in what you do and what you say. If you say one thing, you must make sure that you do the same thing. Uh, as I said earlier, walk the talk. So leadership must, must, must lead by example. And leadership must support the rules and the policies that they have set. Meaning to say that they must make sure that everybody in the organization comply to their own, set, to their own sets of rules. Uh, those that are found to be uh, that, that are found to be doing uh, corrupt practice or those are found to, to do to commit fraud must be uh, taken action accordingly. Uh, people uh, I'm sure they're looking at their colleague looking at the, 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 the environment around them, the working, uh, style of the organization. So if they see or they, they, they found that any of their colleagues that have con conduct, that have, that have uh, uh, commit misconduct, uh, go, when scot free, I'm sure uh, uh, this is not a good example for the organization. And uh, being strict in this topic, I think, is important. Uh, company must take action against those that commit misconduct. Mm. All right, thank you, Dato. There's another question here. Uh, I, I think the questions are coming. Yeah? Mm -hmm. could, could you tell us the most important component yeah, that help organizations to have an effective role in fighting corruption? The most important, important components, what are the important things? that help in fighting corruption in organizations? I think first, the company or the organization and the board must demonstrate that they will not tolerate uh, corrupt practice. Mm -hmm. By number one, creating awareness among the people. Because people perception of corrupt practice so to, to, uh, we will be surprised that uh, some people have low tolerance level for corrupt practice. The highest, uh, 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 or should I say, we must make, make people aware that certain practices are not acceptable in organization. Uh, there are company or organization that, that do not allow their people to take gifts, for example. Uh, you, you're not supposed to have lunch with your business counterparts. So these are examples where the company must, must share with the organization, with their, with, their, their, with their workforce, 
to make sure that everybody is aligned, everybody on the same page of what we define as corrupt practices. Uh, is this important because to, to many people, they take bribe or rasuah as only bagi duit pada polis. As simple as that. You bagi duit swap pada polis, therefore you commit bribery. Other than that, it's not bribery. You'd be surprised that people have that mindset. So awareness is important. And, uh, and the board and the management, I said just now, must strongly convey the message to their people that they do not tolerate uh, taking gift, that they do not tolerate uh, playing golf with your business counterparts. You do not tolerate going holiday on suppliers, uh, 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 paid by suppliers, for example. So these are simple examples that must be shared, that must be agreed with all employees. Once agreed, I'm sure they, they know uh, which line they cannot cross, which rule that they must follow. Uh, uh, so this is important. So company must always have programs uh, to educate and to, to create awareness among their own people. I think that, that's very important. You can set the best rule, you can have the best whistleblowing mechanism, but when, pe when people mindset uh, not on the same page with the board, are not, uh, or their own definition of corrupt practice are not similar to the organization, then uh, you have a lot of uh, alignment uh, job to do. Oh, okay, okay. Right, right, thank you. I think there's another one here. Banyak <laughs> soalan. Uh, my, uh, this is <laughs> this is an interesting one. My question is: Your question. May we know? I uh, know the, the person is Najwa. Najwa's question. May we know how ethics is applied by an organization during this COVID nineteen era? Especially, many workers are being dismissed from the company. Uh, this is a very painful experience that we're going through. Many people are losing their jobs. If I, yeah, yeah, let me that, understand the question correctly. You're talking about how ethics are applied during COVID, uh, it should be similar or even more. I think we're talking about, if you're talking about caring society, this is where I think a lot of people fell victim to the COVID-19 situation that are uh, unthinkable of prior to this. So I think we need to be more passionate. We need to be more concerned about the well-being of uh, your former colleague or the well-being of the employee. So even in dismissal, there are ethics. The way the dismissal is handled, I think, uh, is important. The communication, uh, the notice given to employees when they are to be dismissed by the organization must be done properly. Must be uh, the company or the employer must demonstrate that they care for their staff, even though in this trying period. They even they also care for their staff, even after they're being dismissed. Uh, show your concern on how they're going to live, uh, whether they, 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 they have enough uh, food on table, whether they have place to stay after they lose their job. I think this is, uh, there is uh, something that we have not experienced before. At least many companies have not experienced in retrenching their employees. I personally have not feel or have not gone through similar experience because both organizations that I work with prior to this KPJ and now Felda do not retrench or dismiss our employees. But I believe this is only the this is only the the best way to handle uh, dismissal. You need to be passionate and show more concern and care for our friends and colleagues that have to be dismissed. Right, right. Okay, there's one from Dr. Kamaria. Eh? Uh, okay, uh, ethics in oneself is expected, but as such ethical person started to join a bigger system, 
which unfortunately a corrupted system, how can such a person still retain his stance? Uh, masuk kandang kambing mengembit, masuk kandang lembu menguak. What should the person do? It depends on the person. It depends on the level of entry. If that person is coming to the organization as a chairman of the organization, of course, I expect him to do a lot. If you are in the position, position to change the organization, to influence the, the culture, to influence the, 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 the set of objectives and goals of the organization, uh, then he should join and do something in, on, in the organization. But if, you, if you're joining as uh, another employee reporting to a corrupt manager or corrupt director, I would advise this person to think again whether he wants to join that organization. Because uh, you may be joining an organization that will corrupt you, that will corrupt your mind, that will corrupt your, your, your principle. Mm -hmm. So this goes back to what principle this person uphold and whether he's willing to compromise his own principle. Here we're not talking about just ethics. It may be uh, your, religion, your religious belief that you need to compromise. Well, in Islam, we all know, uh, look seriously or take seriously on, on, on corrupt practice or bribery, that the, the, the punishment be severe uh, in the day, in the, in the hereafter. So it's not just about people or person principle and belief. It is about your, how entrenched is this uh, ethics uh, that are influenced by your own religion and upbringing. So a good ethical person will not join an organization that they cannot influence. As I said, if you are coming in as a chairman, if you're coming in as a managing director to the organization, maybe uh, you can do something about it. And you may want to join that company because you are in a position to influence and make changes to the, to the, to the organization. Otherwise, stay away. Okay. All right, Dr. Kamaria, that's the answer. Okay. There's another question here. Uh, if you do follow the ethical behavior, how do you encourage your peers or colleagues to do the same? This is from Atiyah. Well, uh, again, just like leader, just now, uh, uh, you have to show by example. You have to. Uh, tell them off if they do, if you notice they do, they do misconduct, they do uh, corrupt practice, or if they are involved in fraud. You may want to report to the higher authority if your colleague, or if you have evidence that your colleague are involved in corrupt practices. Uh, of course, giving advice is, is uh, I would say the first thing that you need to do uh, to make sure that your colleague uh, uh, repent and correct their ways. As a friend, you can only give advice, I would say. And if it is serious enough, if it's going to affect the organization, if it is going to affect the place uh, where you work, you may want to report to the higher authority. Ada banyak lagi soalan. Ada banyak lagi soalan itu. <laughs> really I'm, huh? I'm okay. I'm, 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 I'm in my office. I have nowhere to go. Ah, okay. Ini yang ni kita bincus yang ni. Uh, I'm attracted with your sharing about corporations need to have a good working whistle whistle blowing mechanism. Therefore, yeah. What is your advice to young workers that are working in a corporation with huge misconducts and are afraid to report such activities such as sexual harassment? Uh, afraid to report because maybe a young executive has joined the company. So what's your advice? The company that have good whistleblowing system will make it very easy for people to report on misconduct or incidents like 
sexual harassment. Uh, they even accept anonymous complaint. And they even accept, um, uh, you can also make report all the way to the chairman or the highest level authority in the organization. That is uh, uh, example of good whistleblowing system. But if the whistleblowing system only recognize those, com those complaints and comment with name, then they are, they, are, they are a bit prohibitive. But the example given here, sexual harassment, I think this one, you can even make a, a report to police. And uh, there are various bodies out there that, that, that can, can take action, can do investigation on sexual harassment. Uh, any other misconduct in the organization, uh, by right, should be dealt with through a proper whistleblowing mechanism that accept anonymous uh, reporting, that accept uh, reporting without evidence, and the report can go all the way to the chairman or, or chairman of the board or chairman of audit committee. Let's look at, let's look at the next question. If there, there are duplicating questions, we just skip, yeah? Yeah. It's about the, they can type. That's why a lot of questions. We're talking about <laughs> real live audience. <laughs> uh, let's skip you this may one. Not have that many lah. Uh, okay. Uh, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. If uh, if as a subordinate, yeah, we are asked by our superior to do things that contra contradict with integrity. Uh, these are uh, workplace issues. Yeah? Our boss asks us to do something that is that compromise our integrity. This is from Naila. First, uh, advise your boss. I think just like colleague, I think you need to advise. Uh, maybe he or, he or she overlook the, the instruction, overlook certain things in the instruction. So maybe to be frank with the boss, look, this is, uh, this is uh, no, no, this is not acceptable. Uh, if there is clear breach of company rulings and policies, I think that's even easier. Tell your boss what you ask me to do is against the principle, against the policy of the organization. But if it is not against the policy, but it is a, a, a clear example of uh, uh, poor ethics, uh, it will give unfair result to the customer or to other parties, then maybe you need to be highlighted to the boss as well. I would, I, I would advise that first have a discussion and highlight where you think uh, the instruction or directive go against your integrity, go against the value system of the organization. Uh, then you take it up from there. Lah. So must, must inform the, the, the boss, right? Eh? Yeah, highlight and, and, and point out, point out. Sometimes people just uh, maybe oversight or overlook certain some of these issues. I, I mentioned earlier, I'm talking about some 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 people, many people uh, feel it is okay to accept gift. Oh uh, yeah, gift. Yeah. Fine, some fine organization back. ban gift. Ah. Yeah. So these are these are level of uh, expectation and level of uh tolerance uh, so i'm not saying this it, it may not be as a clear product corrupt practice but it could be a simple um, um, difference in definition of corrupt practice so the, the organization must have a clear definition of Correct. what is what is yeah. right what is allowed what is not allowed what is allowed and what is not allowed yeah, in the company yeah all right uh, there's a question here. It's quite long, but it says something like the real world doesn't work like this. Yeah. Uh, when we report, uh, yeah, when we report these uh, corrupt practices yeah, to the higher authorities, we are the one to blame. Yeah. Even the employers, uh, the, the employees do not care about and we don't have power. Uh, this is a question. Uh, what's the actual solution? Uh, when, we, mean, when, the, when the employees don't have the power. I think, uh, maybe we can go very quickly on this. I mentioned earlier, a good whistleblowing mechanism will allow anonymous complaint, uh -huh. anonymous reporting. So the reporter shouldn't fear that there will be action taken against him or her. 
because you 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 report uh, with no names or anonymously. So, but if the system or the whistleblowing system require the reporter to to declare themselves, then it will not work. The fear of action being taken against the messenger, or fear of the action will be taken against the reporter, uh, will will discourage people from reporting. So it's important that, as I said earlier, good reasonable system must allow, must accept anonymous reporting. Anonymous, eh? Must be yeah. And the reporting is allowed to go as high as possible to the to the chairman. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, this one here from Nurul Mazlina. Uh, what if the, the employers ask the employee to pay for their own uh, COVID test? Uh, this one policy, com uh, company policy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's nothing, nothing. It's not, it's not, it's not right or it's not wrong. <laughs> no <laughs> right, no wrong. Uh, it depend on the company policy. Depend on the size. Depend on the situation. Oh. If you, if you, uh, take it upon yourself to attend certain functions, certain policy, a uh, certain certain party or kenuri mm. that expose yourself, that expose the company, then I'm. I would argue that you had to pay for the test yourself. But you, if you believe or to believe to contract the bacteria while doing, while working for the organization, maybe we can argue that the company should pay for the COVID test. So it depends on the on the situation that you are suspected of uh, having contracted uh, the, the the bacteria or the 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 virus. Yeah, the virus. So this is this is down down to uh, company policy, yeah. It's a yeah, policy of correct. I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't think this is uh, a lot to do with integrity or ethics, uh. It's not. It, we cannot say that the company is wrong if the company doesn't correct. pay for the. Uh, uh, okay. You can. If you carry you go and attend certain function. You go to the beach where a lot of people, or you go to uh, to to Kilang that that already uh, being sealed. So this is a self-inflicted, I would say self-inflicted COVID-19 okay. case. Lah. So you have to be responsible for, for yourself and organization. Oh, okay. Okay, Mazlina. Mazlina, bayar sendiri lah ya. Okay, any, any other questions? We have? There's no more. Ada, ah, tak ada dah? Okay, uh, there are no more questions, Datuk. One last, if I may ask, eh, if I, I may ask a question from uh, from you. Uh, you. You have worked in... Uh, KPJ for a, for a good number of years, and then you transit to Felda. How how was the transition in terms of uh, managing the uh, the corporate governance in, in these organizations? It's not relevant. Well, KPJ is a private company listed somewhere, and Felda is a government agency. Basically, Felda is a government. Uh, sector. So that in itself already uh, give two different environment uh, for me to, to work in. So I, I, I can say that I, I have adapted well, maybe. Um, and I have uh, very uh, supportive staff uh, in both organizations that make my job that make my task uh, easier. Uh, anywhere you go, you have to adapt. You have to adopt a new style. So you have to adapt to their culture. Uh, I'm still learning and, um, and, and, and still trying to adopt, uh, trying to adapt myself to certain uh, parts of Felda. Because Felda is big. I've yet to visit many of the rancangan, many of the schemes. Uh, but as far as office is concerned, uh, I would say I have adapted well so far. Mm -hmm. Agile, agility, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, there are no more questions from the chat, and it's already three forty, three forty-four. Uh, we can stop here, eh? that's all, Yeah. So we have come to the let's come to the end of the session. Uh, we would like to express our gratitude and thanks to Datuk Amiruddin Sata for sharing his uh, insights with us on ethics and integrity. And we also like to thank all the students who are with us today. And all I mean, I know if altogether how many 
listening and following uh, no, our session just now? Yeah. Uh, at this time, uh, around uh, 125 are listening, but it reached to, uh, at the time, it was 160 plus. So oh, yes. um, drop off. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, thank you, Dr. Azila. Thank you, UIA. Thank you to everybody for your attention, for listening uh, to our session today. Um, well, I hope to do more of this. Um, but of course, um, maybe if it is about uh, healthcare or finance and account subject, it will be more closer. To my <laughs> to my training <laughs> experience, Heke I hope be. I've I've uh, covered the subject <laughs> up to your expectation. Um, I'm still learning anyway on uh, uh, this subject, ethics and integrity. Right, right. So thank you, thank you very much, Datu. Eh? So we end the session with uh, Surah Al Asyam. Bismillah. All right, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. So I will now, uh, we will leave the session now, yeah? So thank you yeah, for yeah. our audience and everybody who came for the session.